everyone welcome back to the channel and in today's video i'm going to be showing you a very quick way on how to check an existing masonry panel when a load bearing internal wall is removed so the first thing to understand about masonry panel design when you're designing against lateral forces such as wind load is how they fail they can fail either perpendicular to the mortar joint or parallel to the joint how a masonry wall fails will depend on the height and also the length of the wall if the ratios are significantly different than one another, then it will favour one failure method over the other. If, say for instance, the wall panel is very, very tall and not very long, the failure method is likely going to be vertical or parallel to the joint. A scenario where you have a wall with top and bottom restraints is very common in normal housing construction, where the floor slabs are restraining or supporting the bottom and the top of the wall. Return walls or shear walls or piers as some people like to call them is going to help restrain the wall vertically and reduce the span or length of the wall and this is going to help prevent the wall from failing perpendicular along the mortar joint okay so in this example is a previous calculation or design which i had done and i'm just going to be talking you through the steps which i took there are two internal load bearing walls which are going to be removed so that the client can create a big open plan space as you can see, the load bearing walls are actually doing two functions. One is obviously supporting the floor and the walls above. And secondly, it's also providing a lateral restraint to the external masonry walls. By removing this internal wall, we are essentially removing a really large structural shear wall. So we need to check that the external wall is still capable of resisting the lateral loads without failing. As you can see, there is a return or a kink in the external walls in both the north and the south elevation. What I'm going to be checking is to see if the return wall is strong enough to resist the lateral forces. If the return wall is strong enough, that means I won't need to check the external masonry panel as one really, really large panel. So what I'm going to do now is to calculate the force on this return wall. I'm choosing a wind load of 0.5 kN per meter square because the location of this house is within an area which is fairly sheltered, so the wind loads aren't going to be that high. The wind load which you use will vary between locations, and if you're in a place which is very susceptible to high winds, such as an open area or if it's an area on a hill, then the wind loads might be significantly higher, and this is something which you'll need to check separately. So all I'm doing is calculating the area or the tributary area of the elevation where the return wall is going to be resisting that force. Once I've got the area, I can multiply it by the wind load to get a force in kilonewtons, and then I can divide by the height of the wall. And I end up with a linear wind load of 4.1 kilonewtons per meter. The external wall is made up of 100 mil blockwork, a cavity, and a 100 mil brickwork. Because it's a cavity wall construction, that means our effective thickness needs to be calculated, and that comes to 126 millimeters. I also mentioned earlier that this internal wall is supporting the floor and the wall above. From a previous calculation, I would have worked out the beam's end reactions, and I would have had a dead and alive load. Because the gravity load actually benefits or enhances the resistance of the wall, I'm only going to consider the dead load and ignore the live load completely. And I'm going to be using a material safety factor of 3. We can do a quick 2D analysis and work out the bending moments and the shear force. So I'm going to do the shear check first. The shear resistance is defined as FVK and that's equal to FVKO plus 0.4 for design stress. FVKO is the characteristic initial shear strength of the masonry. Typically for blockwork it's 0.15 and brickwork is 0.2. To be conservative I chose 0.15. I'm going to be checking the smallest return and that return length was 900mm. So to work out the design stress I'm going to take the beam end reaction which was 54 kilonewtons and divide by the area of the masonry pier and that gives me a stress of 0.476 newtons per millimeter squared. So now I can add this value to 0.15 and get a design shear stress of 0.34 newtons per millimeter squared, 
which equates to a shear resistance force of 38.6 kN. This shear resistance is greater than the shear force applied, therefore the design check has passed. Okay, so now moving on to the bending check. Now for this example, the wall is going to be spanning vertically. And when a wall is spanning vertically, to check the bending moment resistance, we need to use this equation. FKX1 is simply the characteristic flexural strength of the masonry, and this varies depending on what type of masonry you're using. In this case, we're using a value of 0.25 newtons per meter squared because our blockwork is equal to 100 millimeters thick. GK is still the actual stress due to dead load, and Z is the section modulus. The stress is calculated in the same way as we did in the shear check, and the section modulus is calculated using BD squared over 6, where B is 126 and D is 900 millimeters. Plug all these numbers into the bending moment resistance equation above, and we get a resistance of 8.7, which is greater than the applied, which was 6 kilonewton meters. Therefore, our check passes, and therefore we don't have to do a separate check on the entire masonry panel, therefore saving us a lot of time. So just to recap what I've actually done, by removing the internal wall, which was providing a lot of resistance to the external wall, I've checked that the return wall is capable of resisting all the lateral force from the wind load, and therefore it's completely safe to remove that internal load bearing wall. All these equations can be found in the red pocket book. Alternatively, you can look up the masonry code, which is Eurocode 6. This is a very quick way of doing some masonry design checks and it is reasonably conservative. So if you wanted to get your designs a little bit more economical or efficient, then you might need to dive deeper into looking at the codes. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.